Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back um, to another devotional. We're going to be going through Kevin Barnett's book. Of course, you guys know what it is. It's What's Your True Identity? A superhero devotional. If you guys have not yet picked up the book, the link to the website to buy the book will be in the description. Also, make sure you guys follow Kevin on all of his social media to stay up to date with him. Uh, but today, Ian, we're going to be um, doing the third devotional. This is Better Together. You mm -hmm. talked about a little bit about it in your devotional that you did with yeah. Captain America about this idea of community. Right? And as Christians, we're called to be united. We're called to be together. We're called to be better together. Right? There's a Bible verse that says a house divided against itself cannot stand. And, you know, Kevin starts out this devotional talking about the first Avengers movie, the first team-up movie, which if you guys saw in our last video for the Nerd Fan Club, it is rated S tier. <laughs> um, you know, no doubts about that. We are united in that idea that the first Avengers team-up movie is S tier. Um, so at least the church, or at least us at Cosplay for Christ, were on the same boat when it comes to the first Avengers movie. Um, but that movie, of course, it was a big collaboration by all the Marvel superheroes to fight against Loki and him trying to destroy New York. Um, and there were some really good things and some really bad things um, based off their teamwork that almost um, destroyed them and could have caused their performance to stop Loki to suffer. So, you know, being in community, being united, being together, super important. You guys know the phrase, united we stand, divided we fall. All of that plays into um, you know, into this um, idea of unity that we're talking about. Um, so why is it important for us to be in community? It is true that we are better together, but why? Well, first thing is that um, you get things done um, a lot faster and a lot better when you're mm -hmm. working with other people. And you know, the church for the most part um, you know, and Christians, we've been, you know, divided on a few things. But to keep the church's mission simple, to keep what we do simple, you guys, is the gospel is first, and that is what should unify us. Mm -hmm. Understanding who Jesus is, understanding the authority of the Bible, knowing what the gospel is, the idea of salvation, how to be saved, um, and of course, what Jesus did on the cross is the foundation for all of Christianity, regardless of what denomination you're in. So we have to be united on those big main principles. There are some other minor details that we can go back and forth with and you know, argue about and have different opinions and beliefs about. But for us Christians, this idea of being united in who Jesus is, the gospel, the Bible, super important to our faith, and we need to be united on that. Um, so pretty much this idea of, of unity, everyone is pretty familiar with it. Really not much to say, but the, uh, the hardest part about being in community is dealing with other people. Yeah. Um, because people have different thoughts, ideas, different personalities, how they want to do things. So Ian, you're a community yeah. major, uh, a communications major, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, getting tripped over, over my words here. And... Um, I know you wanted to talk more about this in your Captain America um, mm -hmm. devotion that you know that you talked about last week. So, Ian, I'm going to ask you this straight up: Why is it so hard for people to work together? Why is it so hard to be united? Um, and also, why does it make it seem like we're like the perfect pair, even though <laughs> we argue and have different opinions and ideas about things all the time? I think one of the greatest lies people have about community is that community is the lack of conflict. That's not true, right? You could even look at Jesus and his closest friends, and they had conflict, right? I mean, to the point Jesus straight up told Peter one time, get behind me, Satan, right? Yep. Uh, Peter, or Jesus tries to wash Peter's feet. He's like, no, right? In community, there will be conflict. Not there might be conflict. There will be conflict. But the, the, the part that makes community stronger is how we choose to deal with it, right? Community either rises or falls based on our ability to deal with conflict. Come on. Right, and we see that in the Avengers movie in two very different ways, 
in the beginning, they, they deal with conflict very brutally, kind of biting at each other's necks and kind of, you know, Cap and Tony and Banner and Nick Fury and Thor and all of them throwing in quick little quips, mm -hmm. trying to get each under each other's skin. And that constantly leads to bickering and fighting and eventually leads to Loki's escape, uh, the damage of the helicarrier, the death of Phil Coulson, which comes to the next point where when this conflict comes up, instead they choose unity, right? And in the book, it talks about this, um, this change between these two moments where they go from conflict of comparison and all that to finding an outside conflict, finding a source to invest their strengths in together. Now, as a communication major, one of the things we talk about is conflict management styles. And while there's technically, I believe, uh, nine different conflict management styles, someone can probably correct me in the comments, um, I want to talk about three that are extremely uh, important to understand as we work in community. The first is competition. This is uh, when we put ourselves above others, right? In communication, we call this, I win, you lose, right? And this is going like, I will get my way through. Uh, if you guys know Enneagram, I'm a type eight. So a lot of people go, okay, Ian's very competition minded, very driven towards, um, towards you know, winning and that kind of stuff. So my natural style when I can't have what we'll talk about in a second, which is a, um, sorry, a complimentary style, right? Is to go into competition, right? And go, okay, if we both can't win, then I'll win, right? The unhealthiness with this is in all of our co conflict, we're gonna look at our strengths and our weaknesses and those around us strengths and weaknesses. And in a conflict style, I'm going to bolster my strengths and I'm going to lessen um, the strengths of those around me while lessening my weaknesses and bolstering the, uh, the weaknesses of those around me. Uh, think of like the Hulk, right? The Hulk is not a very good team leader because Hulk is the strongest one there is, right? And that's what Hulk cares about. So if you want to focus a, com a competition style like that, and you see that between him and Thor, they're constantly competing, but instead of taking that on on each other, they redefine that in the third act of Avengers to compete well, right? Using that, because competition isn't inherently bad. There's a time and a place for it. But they use that competition to spur, to spur towards the end goal of defeating the Chitauri, right? They set aside their personal goals of being better than the other, right? While there's still that sub goal, the main goal is to be complementary. The other is avoidance. The avoidance is to go, I see other people's strengths and I avoid their strengths. I avoid my strengths, right? Um, I live in my weaknesses and I try not to see other people in their weaknesses. And that, that might sound good, like, okay, I don't see people's weaknesses. But it's important to see your community's strengths and weaknesses. Because when you're only looking at their strengths, you're going to be a different kind of comparative. You're going to go, I'm not good enough. I'm not strong enough, right? I, I'm not a good speaker, I'm not a good worship leader, I'm not a, whatever your calling is, you'll compare that to the people around you. Mm -hmm. And to avoid conflict, you'll stop. You won't do what you're meant to do, right? Instead, you'll hide away from your calling and not do what you're supposed to do. But the important one to get to is a complementary relationship. This means, look, I go, you know, I'm loud and I'm expressive, right? And writing's my thing, so I write a lot of the lessons for Cosplay for Christ. I talk loud, right? Usually when we go to conferences and stuff or when we get opportunities to speak, I tend to be the one that speaks because I'm loud, right? But I'm not a human relations kind of guy. You know, I'm not very good at the, like, small conversations and messaging people on Instagram and talking through stuff with people. But Brent, Brent does that really well. That's his strength. Right, is he loves those little small moments with people, right? I like the big moments, right? I like the big explosions, right? Um, and I like those having, you know, writing and that kind of stuff. Um, those are my strengths, right? I can, I can move into that, and Brent can move into what I do, right? And both of us know how to do that well at this point. But to play to each other's strengths, we understand where 
to use our skills best, right? I also understand, and we understand each other's weaknesses, right? Uh, my One of my weaknesses clearly can be pride, right? So that means I have to take time and reflect and ask people more humble than me to, to ask them, hey, wh- how did you feel about what I said? Like, not to be like, oh, did I do a good job? But was, I, was it me or was it God that was coming out tonight? Right? Was I centering everything around myself, or was I centering everything around Christ? Um, yeah, and, and one of my weaknesses is isolation. Um, I'm an Enneagram 9, uh, so it's more of the peacekeeper, peacemaker, you know, kind of, uh, uh, kind of you know, personality style. So when things do get loud, when things do get hectic, instead of jumping into it straight in like how Ian will, I will normally shirk away, and if I have to do something, I'd rather do it on my own. Uh, so that way, I, you know, I can avoid other people. I don't have to worry about them. I don't have to deal with them. I don't have to talk to them. I don't have to interact with them. But the job still gets done. Now, is it a great way to do things? Yes and no. Each style works, is what mm-hmm. Ian is, you know, was saying yeah. earlier. Uh, but is it healthy? And if I move away from a community, if I move away from um, accountability, now it becomes a big time weakness that will not only damage what I do, but will damage the community that I'm in. And, um, you know, the perfect example of unity is, of course, in the Avengers movie. It's that scene in New York when they're fighting, you know, the, the Chitari. And, uh, you know, the, all the Avengers end up landing on the street. Mm. And they're in that little circle, and, you know, the camera pans yeah. to each one of them as they're getting ready to, to fight. And Iron Man, you know, says, you know, what are your marching orders, you know, Cap? Mm-hmm. And Captain America, of course, because of his experience and leadership, yeah. military tactics, starts, um, you know, giving orders to everyone based off of their strength. Yeah. Right. He has, um, you know, Iron Man go after the nuclear, um, you know, bomb because one, not only his experience in, um, you know, technology, technology weaponry. physics, weaponry, but, you know, he has, you know, the speed capable to yeah. get to it bottlenecking the uh, the portal well thor does it because he has the thunder which is great because yeah. that portal was up in the sky thunder comes from the sky yeah um hawkeye perfect for scouting and recon yeah. and you know having eyes on everyone and you know for him and natasha to stay on the ground floor and keep uh, you know that area contained um you know allows the other avengers to you know do what they have to do so that they can corner loki they can stop the chitari close the, you know, close the portal and get their hands on the Tesseract, right? So being able to, you know, work in unity, maximizing everyone's strengths while minimizing, you know, their weaknesses and their deficiencies is the true mark, you know, of a leader. And also that's where you want to operate in is in your strengths because it not only makes you better, but it makes other people better. And as Christians, you know, we're called to make, um, you know, the world, the situation that we're in better through loving mm-hmm. others, through serving them, by, you know, being sacrificial yeah. and, um, you know, pretty much loving others the way that God, um, you know, would love them. So uh, we encourage you guys, um, you know, to operate in your strengths. You know, if you do fall into weakness and you do mess up, God will always forgive you. That's yeah. never a problem. And also, you know, one of the greatest things you can do is to lift someone else up. Yeah. Um, you know, be that person because truly we are better together. Yep. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in next week. It's going to be about Iron Man. Mm -hmm. Um, No idea who's going to do that one, but it's going to be great. And until then guys, God bless you. Uh, Thank you for hanging out with us and we'll see you next time.